In this video, I'm going to discuss how the NP242 transfer case went for me, why I swapped one in, why I no longer have it, and how I feel about using it with a manual transmission. The background footage is just me fixing a turn signal socket because the prongs inside it died and my left turn signal only works after you slap it, so unrelated, but I figured I'd give you all something to look at instead of a boring picture of a transfer case. So a long time ago, I learned all about the NP242 and its full-time all-wheel drive capabilities. If you don't know what the 242 is, then I, I don't know why you're watching this video. Go check out my transfer case introductory guide. Anyway, I had a 2001 Cherokee with your typical NP231 in it. My AW4 was going out because I raced it a few times, so I needed to replace the transmission and figured it'd also be an excellent time to replace and upgrade the transfer case too. Living in Wisconsin where snow covers the ground for half the year, having an all-wheel drive XJ sounds pretty badass, so I found a transfer case from a wrecked 1999 for 100 bucks and put it in my Cherokee, also changing the shift gate, bezel, and four-wheel drive linkage. So in the grand scheme, I went AW4 NP231, AW4 NP242, AX15 NP242, and now I have a two-wheel drive NV3550. The only issue I had with connecting the transfer case to an AX15 was the ASI shift linkage. You can't use a stock linkage. You have to go aftermarket on this, and the ASI linkage would kind of get stuck in four low. Not really that big of a deal because it still worked. You just had to have the right magic touch with the shift lever. You could alternatively use a cable shifter here, but I already had an ASI linkage, and like I said, it worked, just not as well as it could have. But the other notable thing, mating a 242 to a manual, is that click every time you shift gears. You can't really hear it, you more feel it. The center differential gears in the transfer case will free spin backwards every time you push in the clutch, as the drive shaft is then turning the gears instead of the engine but only for a brief moment. There is this split second delay when you let off the gas where instead of it switching right to engine brake, it just rolls and then starts to engine brake. It feels exactly like a bad U-joint in a drive shaft. That slack in the drive line really bothered me and it felt like something was wrong, but there's no actual problems caused by this. It's just the gears inside re-engaging. No different than shifting from drive to reverse with an automatic. Friends of mine, not so attuned to the XJ, didn't even notice it. They'd drive it or ride in it, and they didn't notice anything. But me, I felt everything, just because I know the XJ so well. It is subtle, but it's one of those things that once you notice it, you'll never unnotice it. And I did get used to it after some time. It, you know, it became normal. It really isn't that big of a deal. But that click is the only reason they never mated a 242 to a manual transmission from the factory. You could never buy a select track manual Cherokee, and that driveline slack is why. What made me no longer have an NP242 was not its behavior with a manual, it was its practicality in general. I found that having all-wheel drive without ABS or traction control really isn't all that great. I was directly comparing it to a 2002 Subaru Outback, which handles all-wheel drive very professionally, and it, you know, it always knows what to do with itself, where the XJ, being much more primitive in comparison, didn't really know how to drive in all-wheel drive mode. Instead of the rear wheel slipping under low traction, high throttle, it would just randomly pick one of all four wheels to slip, which was not predictable. And I found I could do a better job in the snow in two wheel drive because I knew my back wheels would kick out before the fronts would. In heavy snow, and even on the ice lake, full time will just spin one random wheel because it doesn't have the help of ABS, traction control, or limited slip. Part time will not allow only one wheel to slip. It will either force another one to slip or more likely simply just carry you forward. So Perhaps it was a lack of driver skill and a lack of understanding on how to properly use full-time in an older vehicle, but I never found myself in a situation where having that full-time option really helped any better than part-time could have. I tested it in mud, sand, snow, and ice, and full-time wasn't any better than part-time, aside from just not binding up the wheels in the dry spots. But the one place full-time was actually pretty badass was the rain. Wet pavement has just the perfect amount of grip on it to bind the wheels in part-time, but let them slip in two-wheel drive. Obviously, 
any sane human being can drive a rear-wheel drive vehicle in rain, but full-time actually did an impressive job with it. While raining and in full-time, I could basically just drive like it wasn't raining at all, which was very nice. Yeah, you see, now this is a situation right here where that 242 would be really nice. There's so much water on the road that it's like it's pulling me over to the side where, you know, all the water's pulled up. And the <laughs> Yeah, the 242 handled this kind of stuff really well. So in summary, let's list the drawbacks and benefits in comparison to the 231. I don't have any definitive proof for you. This is just how my experience went. And like I said, the 242 is not at all a bad transfer case. If I were to theoretically buy a Jeep with one already in it, I would just leave it in there. So firstly, the 242 is heavy. It is heavy to install and it is heavy once you got it in the vehicle. You can feel the difference between, if you, like, if you took an identically specced out Cherokee where the only difference is the transfer case, you can tell that one of them's got a 242 in it just on how heavy it is. It feels like somebody just put like an 80 pound weight under the center console. It is heavy. The 231 is simpler, it's lighter. So in that regard, being more simply constructed in comparison, the 242 has a lot more stuff inside of it that can break. Then we have the weird behavior with a manual where the 231 will, will just work fine with any transmission. The 242 can't be used with an NV3550. I'm, I'm sure it could, but I don't know if there is a long input shaft for an NP242 because it never was mated to an NV3550 from the factory. So I can't just like bolt it onto my NV3550 and keep it. With the 231 though, I mean, that was attached to all sorts of transmissions. Another thing with the 242 was that janky shift linkage I mentioned earlier. The, like I said, you could get a cable shifter, um, but the stock linkage absolutely would not work with a 242 and a manual. And the ASI linkage works, but it's kind of iffy. Uh, if you have a 231 though, like literally any linkage will work with that, no problems. And then most XJs don't have 242s and thus you'd have to swap one in most likely. I find probably 80% of four-wheel drive XJs have a 231. So you, if you already have a 231, th then you're, you're good. Full-time works better in rainy conditions, or I've had people point out that maybe it would be even better in all sorts of scenarios if I had limited slips in the differentials. I, I can definitely see that. That would probably make it a lot better, but I am not about to spend $800 plus on an LSD for a stock Cherokee. So uh, it, it was nice in the rain, but in literally every single other type of driving scenario, it really just wasn't worth it. Now, part-time, conversely, does require a bit of driver skill. You know, you, you can't like just throw it in part-time and go drive around. You know, you, you kind of have to keep an eye on what you're doing and don't bind up the wheels or break a drive shaft or an axle you join or anything like that. But I already know how to do that. You know, it's, it's as simple as not using part-time on high traction surfaces. That's not hard to wrap your head around. So there's really no drawback to the 231. So now I have a two-wheel drive NV3550 equipped Cherokee that I will be putting four-wheel drive into. Obviously, to do that, I need a transfer case. And I'm going back to an NP231. Mostly because any situation I'd need a 242 in, I could make do with the 231. And, and like I said, you can't put a 242 on a 3550 anyway. So if anyone out there has a 242, let me know what you think of it. You know, I don't want this video to be a defining factor in making the decision for you. So maybe reading others' comments, you can make a more informed decision. I like the 242, but I also like the 231. Maybe I'll regret it someday, but that's too bad because I already sold my old transfer case. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.